Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. All right, today we're going to go straight now into our study. Father, we ask that you open our eyes, give us understanding. Let there be transformation. Let there be total healing and total establishment of your perfect will. As we study your word this morning, in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. All right, we'll continue the study on the access. Access. You know, God wants us to have access to his will. He wants us to have access to him. All right, so he has created diverse access points for us you know, so that we can be able to access him. All right, this thing, get in there. Okay, good. So that's it. So the access that we are looking at today is the access of thanksgiving. We have access to God, all right? And we need to know about it. So one of the access that we have to God is thanksgiving. Last week, I was talking to us, or we were studying in the devotion uh, about the access of the blood. Every time you say, Father, I come into your presence by the blood of Jesus, you are there, right there in his presence. He said, but pastor, I mean, I am not sure whether I'm so holy to be there. Your holiness is not a requirement. Your holiness helps you here to be able to have the power of God flow from you into your situations. Your holiness helps you here to radiate Christ to others so that people can see it. Your holiness helps you here to have the effulgence of God's glory so people of darkness can see you are a child of God and they are afraid of you. You have that fire around you. Your holiness makes that happen. So when they try you, fire burns them. Your holiness does that. But when it comes to appearing in his presence, it's the blood. It's the blood that's your access. It's the blood that's your access. Okay? Um, it's the blood that's your access. So this morning, we're looking at the second access, which is thanksgivings. Thanksgivings. Psalm 100, and I'm reading from verse 1 to verse 5. Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with what? Thanksgivings. And into his courts with praise. And be thankful unto him and bless the, his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. His truth endureth to all generations. Now, when I was talking about the blood being accessed, I know um, some of us will have, because this is coming up in my spirit, so <laughs> some of us are thinking, what about the scripture that says, holiness without which no man shall see the Lord? Yes. Without holiness, you can't see God, all right? But this holiness that presents you before God is the holiness that the blood of Jesus provides. The holiness that you leave helps you here. It is the holiness that Jesus' blood provides that gives you access to God. So when we say we come by the blood, you know what that means? The blood washes you, cleanses you, and you walk through it into the presence of God because the blood presents you perfect and blameless. You cannot present yourself blameless. There will be one thing, one thing, one thing somewhere. <laughs> you understand? But the blood presents you blameless. So that holiness without which no man shall see the Lord is the holiness that the blood of Jesus provides. It's a gift of the blood of Jesus to you. Okay? That's what it is. The gift of the blood of Jesus. All right, so um, let's um, move on. I'll read the devotional. So in the devotional, it says, 
As soon as God created man, God started visiting man every day. That this is why we believe that is that I mean, sorry, that's this is why we believe that this demonstrated the core purpose of God for mankind. I believe very strongly that the first purpose of God for man is for intimacy. The second purpose of man is let us make man in our image after our likeness, let them have dominion. Because if dominion on earth is the only purpose of man, when we die and we go to heaven, then what is our purpose? So it can't, be, it can't just be dominion on earth. It's more than that. All right? Intimacy is the force. We are created for intimacy. God created us to have intimacy with him. Eden was the meeting place of God and man between God's throne and earth. Man was sent out of Eden, but God still pursued making real his original plan for man by creating new access portals for man to come for fellowship with him. So Eden was that place of meeting, all right, between earth and heaven. It was physically on earth, but it was a portal between earth and heaven, between the spiritual and the physical. And when man, I mean, disobeyed the instruction, man was thrown out of there. So the meeting place was kind of shut down. But God still pursued man, you know, by giving us more access now to him, more portal access, so that we can be able to come and fellowship with him. Another access portal that man was given was discovered by David. It is called thanksgivings and praise access. We are able to access the presence of God to worship and fellowship with him through thanksgivings and praise access. All we need to do, all we need to do is give thanks and build the attitude of thanksgivings and praise and we will be able to worship in his presence and fellowship with him. So if you can develop the attitude of thanksgivings, always thanking God, not complaining. God hates complaint. God hates murmuring. People are destroyed in the wilderness because of murmuring. Just murmuring. They, were they died. You know, we need to understand, you know, I, I, I didn't see murmuring as so much of a grievous sin, you know, originally. I didn't see, I just, uh, the person murmuring, uh, that's their problem. Until when I was reading the scriptures and I saw that, ah, God dislikes it so much. In fact, many of us, even I, I don't think I've really got into the depth of why God dislikes murmuring and complaining. You know, I, I don't think I've gone to the depth of it. But it's just important for us to know that God dislikes it. He, he doesn't like murmuring. He likes you to give them. That's why the Bible says, in all things, First Thessalonians in chapter 5, he said, in all things, give things. No, no matter what's happening, good or bad, evil or great, it doesn't matter. Give thanks. The situation is negative. Give thanks that is not worse than that. Give thanks. Find something in it to give thanks for. It gives you access to God. It gives you access to your Father. It gives you access to His presence. All right? Very important. All the patriarchs knew. Sorry. All that the patriarchs knew was to offer animals on the altars as worship through the smoke of the burnt animal. David discovered that having conversation with God through singing, starting with thanksgivings, opened a dimension of the throne room to a person. David discovered that. This was why his tabernacle was, after, was not after the tabernacle of the congregation which Moses erected and built and erected, it was a big tent, and the ark of God was never, which sorry, the ark of God, which was never seen, became the became became uh, uh, exposed to commoners in the tabernacle, and was set was placed right in the center of the tent, and all saw it. See, David saw the patriarchs Abraham, Isaac, all of them. They just give animals. The smoke of the animal was their worship. To God. As, as long as they see the smoke going up, they believe they are worship God. But David discovered that you have, you have to open your mouth and thank him. 
you have to open your mouth and praise him. And that that opened a dimension of, of access that is unspeakable. All right? So when they was going to set up his own tent, the tabernacle of David, it was just a big tent and he put the ark right in the center because he realized that there was that access that doesn't have this long protocol. And it's just thanksgiving and praise. So they gathered in that uh, tabernacle of David and just gave thanks and praise God. Why? Because that gave them access. And David demonstrated it by the way he set up the tabernacle. Because it gave access. Thanksgiving and praise gives access. It did not destroy the people because they were offering one of the most powerful offerings that God accepted. Thanksgiving and praise. So the people that were in the tab in, in tabernacle of Moses singing praises, the Levites and the priests and the king himself, you know, they were not supposed to even see the ark at all. The ark was supposed to be seen by only one person once every year, and that's the high priest. But these people were seeking the ark every day, and they were worshiping, and the ark didn't consume them. Why? Because they were offering one thing that gave access to God, free access to God. All right, thanksgiving. So we will always give thanks. We should, sorry, we should always give thanks, th thanks, and then praise Him. And these two will help open the portal to the throne room for us. And I believe today the portal is open for you. Thanksgiving, just give thanks. Give thanks, and you have access. Give thanks and praise Him that you have access. Give thanks and praise Him, and then boom, they're there. Let us pray. Pray and say, Father, help me to maintain. Always the attitude of thanksgiving and to always set my mind to praise you at all times in the name of Jesus. By them, I receive access to your throne room always, having fellowship and communion with you in Jesus' name. Pray that in the Holy Ghost. As I do, I at the of Commons, good no fian bellis, good papa, Bereto, 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 Brucadasco, no sire. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Glory to God. We thank God for His mercies. Now you're going to go ahead and confess the word because the words we speak today create the future that we desire tomorrow. Never forget that. The words we speak today creates the future we desire tomorrow. So say with me, say in the name of Jesus, I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. The old things have passed away. All things are new. I'm a brand new person. I'm a brand new man. I've been washed with the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Therefore, my body, my organs and systems, bones and cells, Genes and DNA cannot be corrupted, deformed or defiled by any force or any element. In the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus flows in my blood. Therefore, all negative experiences and diseases of the old bloodline are being purged out of my blood and my lineage. The covenant in the blood of Jesus is the only covenant that speaks in my life. Christ is my head, my foundation, and my root. Therefore, no other foundation speaks in my life and in my lineage but Christ. In the name of Jesus, I am the blessed of the Lord, empowered to prosper, go forward, and be great. I have the power to get wealth. So wealth flows into my life. Money follows me and serves me as my slave. I am blessed with abundance of it. I am blessed with lands and properties and all means of transportation. Yes, as a seed of Abraham, my land is blessed. The heavens over me are opened. My land is fruitful in the name of Jesus. Jesus took the diseases I shall have had the sicknesses, affliction that shall have oppressed me. He took them to the cross. He nailed them to the cross. I declare, I cannot be sick. The Spirit of God pours life into my body. I have the life of God in me. I have the life of God in my body. In the name of Jesus, I live in sound health by the life of God. 
I am highly favored. Everywhere I turn, favor works for me. People favor me. Elements favor me. All of creation support me. In the name of Jesus, I've overcome all resistance. I and all that are mine, we dwell in God's secret place. We are surrounded by God himself as a wall of fire. Therefore, no evil can befall us. No plague can come near our dwelling. We have overcome. For with long life, he has satisfied us. We shall live. We shall not die. To declare the glory of God in the land of the living. In the name of Jesus, we prosper and we do well in all areas of our lives. In the name of Jesus, I am head and never tail. I am from above, so I'm above all. In all fields of my endeavor, anointed with the oil of gladness, seated on the thrones of David and Christ, ruling in my fields and in an and, 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 and industry that I'm engaged in. In the name of Jesus, I declare, yes, I and my spouse are one. Our children are taught of the Lord. Great is their peace. They are holy seeds and they are mighty on the earth. In the name of Jesus, I am born of God. God is love. I am love. I walk in love. God is holy. I am holy. I walk in purity. I do not sin. God is righteous. I am the righteousness of God. Discharged and acquitted. Justified. In the name of Jesus. No sin, charge, or accusation can be leveled against me. Jesus took my place. Took all my iniquities. Took all my transgressions. Suffered in my place. I am free. In the name of Jesus. I declare... My spirit is in perfect connection with the Father. I am an Elohim spirit. Therefore, I have unhindered access to the Father God. I hear his voice. I have conversations with him every day. In the name of Jesus, I engage his presence and I carry his presence everywhere I go. I am God's chosen, God's elect. God's beloved, and because he loves me, I am victorious today. I am successful. I have overcome all. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I am triumphant. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I have the spirit power and anointing of the move of God in my life. Therefore, I manifest the fullness of Christ's character. Thinking what Jesus would think, saying what Jesus would say, doing what Jesus would do in all situations. I manifest the fullness of Christ's power. I cast out devils. I lay hands on the sick and they recover in the name of Jesus. I manifest.